Welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium. Um, we are going to jump right into the show right now, as soon as I remember <laughs> my words for the show. Oh my gosh, I always, always mess up the intro because I don't have an intro, but that's okay. Here we go. Uh, please don't get scammed. I'll never reach out to you. Um, this show does air on WSCS, all of their streaming channels, and uh, all of their like podcasts, Rude Rangers TV, all of their streaming channels, all of their podcasts, and all of the podcasts I put the show on. Uh, Rude Rangers TV also has it on their radio stations. So you can literally watch and uh, or listen to this any place, any place. Um, we are going to get started right away today. Should I do names? Yeah, I should do names. Is some of these names, if if it's the name for one person, if the one name could be for several people. So just please know that um, if there is a name, it doesn't, and somebody says, oh, that's my person, it could also be your person. Um, there are several people that always come in and are around us. So I'm going to start. Uh, this could be the name of someone in heaven. It could be your name. It could be a loved one or a pet's name. Whatever the name is, I'm going to just let them uh, come out. Miracle, Miracola. Um, I can't pronounce that, so I'm going to come back to it. Uh, the next name is... Um, Luciana, the next name is Shry. I see S R I. I'm not, and I hear Shry, so I hope that's the right pronunciation. Those could also uh, definitely be two different names. Um, the next name is um, Mikel. Mikel. The next name is Joss. Joss. Brian. Beatrice. Edna. Bertha. I don't know. I've. I don't know if I've ever said the name Bertha on the show before. The next name is. Elena, Shiendi, or Shiandi. The next name is Misty. And that could actually be Misty Rain, but Misty. Winter, Jack, I don't know if I said this name already, but Beatrice, it's just, it's just, it's showing up again. I'm going to do two more names, Tom and Jonathan. Next, I'm going to do confirmations. I know typically I would do songs, but the confirmations have been going over really well, and I am getting them all the time. So I'm going to do um, confirmations, and the confirmations are, this could be something your loved one loved, they know you love, or when you see this, you have a sense or a feeling that they are around, or it's a reminder of them. Like, the smell of bacon could be a reminder of someone. Cigarette smell is oh, is my mom's confirmation for me. Cigarette butts is a friend of mine who passed away. His his sign for me is cigarette butts, which is so crazy. But it is what it is, right? 
The first thing is uh, chip, chipmunks. The next one is roosters. The next one is uh, olive oil. The next one is I'm just hearing pit, pitted seeds, pitted seeds, whatever that means. I'm, I don't even know what that means, but somebody does. And that's their confirmation, pitted seeds. The next confirmation is um, uh, giant trees, really big, big trees trees. I, I'm hearing like redwoods, but it doesn't have to be a redwood, but giant trees. Cranes, like the, the bird crane, I think. Timber lakes, timber lakes, timberland. I'm getting timberlands, timber. It's a shoe. Or the guy who sings. Take your choice. I think they're called Timberlands. Okay, next, the next confirmation is plums. <laughs> Again, <laughs> this is uh, something that should remind you of someone or when you see it, they they loved it they whatever okay so okay the next confirmation is carnations the next confirmation is finches or um honey honeysuckle birds with the really long thin beak I, I'm just hearing honeysuckle birds, and they're showing me it has a very long, thin beak. The next confirmation, banana trees, coconuts or coconut trees. I'm going to do two more confirmations, and then I'm going to start taking calls and questions. Um... This is going to be a little bit more specific, specific. I said it correctly. Raggedy Ann doll. They're showing me a really old raggedy, like the original um, raggedy Ann doll. So that is, that's, if that's for you, that's pretty specific. And then um, the last one is uh, baby blankets. Okay, I'm going to start taking calls and answering questions on the chat. If you would like to ask a question, please make your questions somewhat specific. I don't do full on readings on the show. Uh, you can ask a question about life, love, career, finances. Please make it specific to a category. Um, or you can connect with a loved one on the other side. If you would like to connect with a loved one on the si other side, I need their first name and their relationship to you. And then um, whatever question or information or conversation you would want with them. If you are in the chat and you're asking a question, please make sure that you are subscribed to the show and that you have hit the like button. That's very kind of you to do. Thank you so much. Going to the first caller, 708. What's your name and where are you calling from? Pat from Illinois. Hey, Pat, how can I help you today? You know, you said Raggedy Ann doll, and my mother-in-law used to make Raggedy Ann dolls for all the grandchildren, and she taught me how to do it. Um, I wasn't even thinking about it. A question for her, but that was interesting that you said that. That um, is amazing. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm, Go ahead, love. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I talked to you before. I'm going to um, a tapering from um, a prescribed med medication, and um, I'm. I'm doing it through the you know psychiatrist that I you know 
had prescribed it originally, but I'm really having a lot of issues with my family. They want me to go into a center because they're really worried about me and I don't know how to reconcile with them. And um, I don't know if they'll talk to me again. Okay, so I need to clarify something. Is your family worried about once you go off the medication, how you're going to be? Or is your family worried about how you going off the medication is going to affect you? Well, they see how it's affecting me. And, you know, I lost a lot of weight. They, they think I'm, I'm anorexic. I'm not. I it just, you have a lot of gut issues going along with this. And I think the facility that they want me in is for eating. And it's, it's just, and again, I don't know, is there a message from my mother-in-law that she came up in that? Okay. So again, I'm going, I'm going to try to answer your question. Um, so uh, here's what I'm going to say for you in going off of this medication in the safest way for you with the least side effects, you may want to work with somebody outside of like, don't go against, I cannot tell you to go against what your doctors are saying. What I can say is you can add to a naturopath or an Ayurvedic person who can help with your gut issues and help with your stomach. Um, somebody who does, let's just say, um, what is it called? Acupuncture also works with herbs that can help to address some of the issues you may be having aside from going off of the medication and helping you to uh, work with that system, okay? Having said that, okay, um, we don't always, and I, I'm not saying this one way or another, I'm just making a general statement here and I really want you to think about it because it, it's true for me, it's true for others. I think everybody listening right now would would agree with what I'm about to say. We don't always see the changes to our face or body because it happens gradually day by day. And then all of a sudden we see a picture of ourselves where we try to put on our last year's shorts and they don't fit or they're too big. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I think I shrunk them. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the point is, um, when we do a side-by-side -side comparison from months or weeks ago, we can see changes or differences. But as we go day by day, slowly down in weight or up in weight or get a few more wrinkles or grays, we're not noticing it day by day. But when somebody hasn't seen us for a minute and then they see us again and they may notice it so much faster than we would because they have the comparison of the last vision they had of us. So what I would say to you is take into account what other people are saying and do if, if you if you're not comfortable doing things the way they want you to do things, find another way to do it. For example, uh, a, a natural, like a, a, a acupuncturist with herbs or a whatever it is um, to help you to heal what's causing the issues. A naturopathic type of doctor. That way, you can get yeah. to a point where you've gone from one system to another, but you're still being cared for and looked after. Now, sometimes people panic because if you're 
doing things the way you are, let's just say while you were on this medication, it worked in their view, in their opinion, and they saw what they considered to be progress with you. And then you're going off of it and there's not, they're seeing that progress might be slipping away. Of course, they're going to be nervous because they care about you and they love you and they want you to be in the best possible spot. Again, um, I am going to say have a system in place and be addressing whatever issues there are um, for, for yourself, okay? Okay, and, and there's a possibility that at the end of this journey, I will help somebody else out. I, I hope that's the case. Yes. And again, I think I told you last time, I just keep hearing write a book, write a book, write a book. I think when you start writing, something's going to come out that's going to help you understand why all of this is happening and and why it started in the first place. And I want to I wanna say this, and I really, I really hope it's as we sometimes, whether it's writing, journaling for ourselves, writing a book for the public, when we get to the source of why we do what we do or why we feel like we need to, in some cases, look a certain way or we, whatever it is. When we get to the source of that, even just the knowing of it is so powerful. And I'm going to tell you, at nine years old, your life changed. Something came in at nine years old. It was, I, and I'm not going to say it on the air. And I, 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 I want you to keep it private. I, I hear four and I hear nine. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Whatever those things were at four and nine, or whatever started at nine. Um, and it could be something somebody was saying to you, something somebody, it could have been an action, something that happened or what, what, whatever it is, that's where a lot of this stems from, okay? And I will tell you, okay. once you understand that, everything else will fall into place, okay, love? Everything else will fall right. into place. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm going to, right now, I'm going to do a clearing for not only you, but everybody who is, you know, watching or listening. The source of the trauma, we're going to heal, clear, release the source of the trauma. And I know what that feeling is. And I know what that. <clears throat> We're just going to clear, heal, and release this. We're going to pull all of this out, the source of the trauma. We're going to clear all that caused it, all that's kept it, all the reasons we haven't let go of this. We're going to heal that. And then we're going to also heal, clear, release all that this has caused us, all the ways it's caused us to behave, all the cycles, all the patterns, all the beliefs that it's caused, we're going to pull that out. It's the after effects of the trauma. Because once we get trauma, then we can have a whole new behavior, belief, uh, cycle, program, system. So we're going to heal, clear, release all of that too. And please come back and listen to this again. Let it help you in whatever way it is. And this, this, I'm going to tell you this now, this has the ability to take the trauma out one trauma at a time or many traumas at a time, whatever you allow for and however you can handle it. Things go as we can handle it and things go as we can let them go, okay? Hey, Elizabeth, how are you today? I am 
Good, Elizabeth. I'm going to go to Samantha. I believe this is the first question on the chat on YouTube. Um, my name is Tony. Uh, so, Samantha, um, I'm at the end of my divorce. We are getting ready to sell the house. Can you give me any insight how that will go? I'm very scared. I will lose even more money. Uh, she did say, sorry, Tony. It's okay. Um, uh, yeah, are they going to sell it? Yes. Is it going to sell for what they want? Very close. Um, you know, I feel like, Samantha, I'm going to say this. And it's really unfortunate. If this is true, I want you to confirm it for me. I, I want you to tell me, yes, let me know if this is true. I feel like the person you're dealing with will lose money just to make you lose money, like a win at all cost type of person, somebody who will take the loss just so you don't get something, um, would run up and run just run everything to the end that like I hear just the bitter, bitter end. Um, just to hurt you. Right. I, I feel like that's the case. I also feel like Samantha, some things were hidden during this whole process. A bit was hidden during this whole process. I feel like the person that you're letting go of has some addictions. Please let me know, Samantha. Give me a yes on this so I know I'm tapping into the right person. I feel like this person has some addictions. Um, maybe you know about one or two of them. I feel like you do not know about, you might not know about all of them. You might have an idea of it. Um, I feel like this person that that you are divorcing is like a bitter bitter billy <laughs> like a like a, a bitter billy but also like a billy goat like will ram its head into something knowing it's gonna hurt its head <laughs> but as long as it gets to ram its head and prove its little point i i just feel like that's the type of person the personality type you're dealing with. And I'm I'm sorry that you're dealing with that type of personality if this is if this is correct. I apologize. I I, I don't apologize. I didn't do it, but I I'm sorry you're dealing with this. I am going to tell you this. Um here's what I'm gonna tell you, Samantha. Once everything is finalized, run. Don't walk to the nearest exit. Take a breath of fresh air and be free. I feel like, and I know the universe is such an amazing universe. Anything you were supposed to get that you don't get, it will come to you another way. I feel like once all of this is said and done, uh, she confirmed, she said, let, let me put this on the screen so everybody knows I'm not making it up. Once everything is said and done, and confirmed and over, you're gonna go mother fudging gangbusters. And I just see um, money, dollar bills, y'all, dollar bills, y'all, dollar, 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 dollar bills, y'all. I'm sorry, I know I can't sing. Um, and I know those probably aren't even the words, but I just see dollar bills falling down and around you. I feel like the money's gonna come flooding in. Once you get this person, out of your energy and thank goodness you're not keeping this home because i don't think there's anybody you know it would take a couple energy cleansings to get his stank off it oh my gosh i'm so sorry samantha <laughs> to get his stank off it um so it's good that you are moving and you're gonna have a new start in a new place without that you know, cemented energy and the memories of it all. Um, but once this is done, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Usually the guy blows up or glows up in money. I'm trying not 
I don't want to, but, but in this case, you, you are going to something really favorable, like some, a table's about to turn. Oh, <laughs> like I see, I, I, it's crazy the way they're showing this to me. So please, whatever this means, come back and let us know because we're going to want to know. We need to know. I see like there's a turkey in the middle and it's been picked to nothingness. You can't even use the bones. You can't even put this in, in the, the, the bones of this in water to make a broth for a soup. It's been picked to nothingness. But when I said the tables are going to turn a whole big like 30 pound turkey lands in front of you. So what I'm saying is what I'm saying. And what they're saying is um, you're about to get the feast, cornucopia, just something's going to rain down on you, but it needs to be completely done over. Everything needs to be done over, signed, sealed, delivered. And then all of a sudden, uh, things are going to start to go your way. Things you're going to start getting rewards. And I do feel, Samantha, if you're not in business for yourself or doing some sort of side thing, you're going to be invited into one. No, it is not an MLM or one of those online things, you know, like just get other people to join online and then you'll make this much. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. I do feel like, however, there is another person involved and that person and you are going to start some sort of, I'm getting organization is the word I'm getting. And it's going is it's going to be some sort of organization and it's going to go really well. Now, if this doesn't happen the day after everything signs up, don't worry. You need to reclaim your power, your energy, your, um, you need to get back into your energy, back into your, you your goddess, your girl, you need to get your girl on girl, you just need to get your girl back on. Um, and once you do that, it's going to start like baby steps. And then it's going to be like, bigger steps. And I just see money falling for you. And it's going to be good. You're going to come out way ahead. In the end, my love, you are really going to come way ahead. I'm going to do a healing clearing release for everybody. And this is, um, well, I just said something. Um, oh, yeah, taking taking every. So we're going to reclaim right now. Everybody watching, listening, we're going to reclaim us. Okay. We get into relationships and we become about that person. We become about the couple. Uh I'm going to cry. We become about the relationship, the kids, the dogs, the pets, the work, the everything. It's so overwhelming. The feeling I'm getting from everybody as I say this is like, ah, and it it's making me a little emotional. And I apologize for that. We forget who we are. We forget our vibrancy. We forget we used to be sassy and saucy <laughs> and you know we we had an us we had a me so let's i'm going to do this now so i want for everybody on youtube i want you to comment i want you to tell me what you're feeling as i'm doing this all of our energy confidence esteem respect love is coming back to us now all of our power, all of our knowing, all of who we are, all of our pieces, particles, everything that is us, that is you, is coming back to you now. It's being pulled from wherever it is. Nobody needs it. Don't worry. You are not taking anything anybody needs because they have their own. So it's coming back to you now. It's going, cleansing, strengthening, and going into your system. 
It's reacclimating and strengthening within you. Now it's expanding out into your energy and expanding through your six foot energy per. I can't think of the word is right there. Your six foot energy thinger. They know what we're talking about. It's okay if I don't know the word. Take a slow, deep breath in, pull it all in, accept it, receive it, claim it, own it. Okay. Come back and keep doing that every day until it's locked in and you know what that feels like and you keep that feeling. I'm going to go straight to the next caller. 610, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Sonia. Sonia? Hi, how are you? Where are you calling from, yeah. love? I'm calling from Pennsylvania. How can I help you today? Um, I just wanted to give two of those affirmations to start off. Um, the big tree. <laughs> I have a giant, um, what do you call it, a maple, which I love very much. Um, it changes colors and over the season and it's very strong and robust and chipmunk um, today actually yeah. I was out in my yard yes. and I saw something scurrying when I was praying and I'm like what is that and I saw it I'm like I am so sorry I disturbed you from your home <sighs> and I saw it running and it went like dog under and I felt so bad but anyway, that was kind of amusing. But I just wanted to throw it out there. But my real question is real estate related. Um, I'm very excited because my house has been up in the market. It was listed, believe it or not, on 7 and 7. And I've been living here 11 years, which is another interesting number, number 7 and number 11. And I'm having an open house this Sunday. And the house is impeccable. And I wanted to see what you're picking up. If you see me getting any offers and eventually selling and getting my asking price and around what time frame. Okay. You are going to sell. Um, you're going to get very close to your asking price. Very close. Um, you know, one of the things I am hearing is it needs to be, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to explain it. So, it needs to be in front of more eyes, meaning not having people come in, but for example, doing some social media stuff with it without the address, just like putting some social media or just finding a way to get it more um, public. But if you don't do that, it is still going to sell. It is going to sell... Um, September. Okay. And I feel like I hear the ninth. I don't know if that's when you're going to get the offer or what's going to happen on the ninth, but I feel like it's going to sell. Oh, wait. Um, is she going to get the offer in August? It'll sell. Okay. I, thank you. I, I feel like as of right now, you may get an offer in August and then in September should it should sell I don't know how that means so I'm just okay. going to leave it at that the 9th is going to be a really good day for you and is it September 9th is September 9th 9 9 is it I can't think of anything but I mean I've gotten I've gotten already two offers but honestly I'm not kind of low and being a house, I spent so much money. I felt kind of insulted that they, that they offered me such low offer. So I declined them, of course, because my house is not dilapidated. Yeah, no, I feel like you're going to get a, an offer closer to what you want. Hold out. Um, just hold out. Don't worry. I do feel like you are going to get an offer closer to what you want. Okay, love? Okay, thank you. You're, you are so, so welcome. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to go to the next question on 
um, on the chat. And it is, you know what, before I do that, um, where are you? I think I went too far. Um, I did. There is someone who keeps asking a question in the comments and cannot join the show. So I'm going to answer this way. And I hope because I feel like if I answer one question in the comments, like if I put then everybody might think, oh, we can just ask a question here. No, no, you can't. Um, no, the answer is no, you're not. I every time I know, I think her name, the name is Feline. Um, you're not going to get back into your home as of right now. If you do, it would take way too long. And um, I feel like it might cost too much. And it's better to start looking. I do feel like even though you really want to get back in, and I wish I, wish I could get a little bit more of the details because sometimes that helps me understand the messages. It doesn't come through in full paragraphs and they don't give me every detail of everything. If you know me, I, I even listening to people talk sometimes and I, I, you know, from spirit, I get words, sometimes parts of sentences. So what I, I just get no cost too much and cost too much emotionally, psychologically, and financially for you. And also um, start looking at another possibility. So I hope that's help, helpful. And Elizabeth, you'll be the next one on the chat that I answer the question for. So I'm going to go to 203. 203, what's your name and where are you calling from? Tony, it's Pat from Connecticut. Um, you answered a question on chat. Are you willing to answer another one about my dog or do I just get one question? Uh, typically, I only let everybody have one question, but I know you already know that. Okay, that's fine. What's the question about your dog, love? No, I didn't know that. No, no, no. no. Go ahead. That's okay. What's the question about your dog, love? Oh, okay. I've got my foster dog back for a couple of weeks. Um, she had cancer removed. And I'm just wondering what you see as the prognosis and will I have her again? Um, you have her right now, correct? Is that what you said? Yeah, just, just, just for a couple of weeks while the original foster mom was on vacation. Okay. Um, there's some background noise, so I'm just going to mute you for a second while I answer this so I can focus in on the question. What I'm going to say to you, Pat, is uh, I feel like you will have her again, but for, for a very short time. So I hope that's helpful, love. Thank you so much for calling in and listening to the show and asking questions in the chat. And I, I'm really, really super grateful for every question in the chat and every call but I like to be fair to everybody waiting also. I would spend an hour with one person if there weren't like other people waiting. So I, I get very, um, I don't know if anxious is the word when I see all the people waiting and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're sitting there waiting. I need to get to them too. And answer for them too. Okay, Elizabeth wants to know any message from my husband, Marty. The first thought, the, I hear a song and um, the first song, I the first thing I hear is this song, Cynthia Bang On. I, I, I don't know, I don't, just those words, since you've been gone, whatever that song is. And then the next thing is, um, that is another song. I can't live if living is without you. I can't live if living is without you. I can't give, I can't, or I can't live, I can't live anymore or give anymore. I don't know, that song, whatever that song is. And then, boy, the, he's bringing the music through. And then he, he is saying, 
I think that I, if he's, he's saying, I missed two lips. <laughs> it could be the flower. <laughs> That's really not the way he's pronouncing it. But what do I know? Um, and then um, he's saying, when we meet again, I'll get it right next time or I'll get it, I'll get it better next time. And you'll see just how much. I appreciated you and loved you. I hope those messages make sense, Elizabeth. I hope they help you a great deal. I'm going to go to the next caller who is 856. 856, um, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, it's Rose Maria from New Jersey. Hey, Rose Maria, how can I help you today? Um, I don't know about if it's love or the situation I'm in with my brother. My parents have anything to say, what to do, or if we should tell, or I'm not moving somewhere else. Either okay. one of them. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. Give me the name of someone from the other side, love. Um, Gina is my mother. Okay, we're going to stop there. And I'm going to let Gina bring through whatever message you need to hear today, because you have a couple things. Remember, if, if, if hey, everybody, remember... Um, if you do have a lot going on, I do private sessions um, and I do private readings. You can get, get all of your things, your issues answered. So the first thing Gina is saying is, um, give me, give me a second here. I'm just, again, I'm going to mute you just for a second, or I'm going to mute you just so I can focus in on your question because there were a couple of things there and I feel like one thing is going to be answered boyfriend brother moving moving so the one thing that is a start preparing now start looking make sure you are having your um everything in order your ducks in a row so to say don't let uh two okay don't let it just go, uh, uh, I know what she's saying, Don't, day by day by day by day by day by day without doing something, like you have to you have to do something to make it happen. But like, you know how sometimes we just think, okay, uh, when the thing comes or what you're doing, I know exactly what she's saying. I'm trying to find the right words for it because um, I get the feeling and the knowing of what she's saying, but she hasn't put it in words. And the way this would be said is, do you know how when we look and we say, oh my God, I can't believe it's been a month. She, oh yeah, put timelines. Time, like I'm gonna, I, my, um, mm -hmm, um, like, like, okay, I'm giving this a month. And if things don't get better in a month, that's it. I, I'm gonna take this action. So make a, a plan of, okay, thank, oh, thank goodness. Make a plan of action <laughs> and then follow that plan of action. So give timelines or like time limits. Like, again, I'm going to see what happens over the next month. If it doesn't get better, if things don't change, then I am going to do X, Y, and Z. But put it down either in your mind or on paper so that you have an action plan that you can look back to and see don't just one of the things okay when we are in a situation where we're thinking about moving or we might be in a relationship that isn't maybe the healthiest or the best um we just go day by day and we we allow just all of a sudden it's a year and then it's two years and then it's six and a half years and you're like wait this it's the same thing we're in the same situation where nothing has changed give time limits and and say listen i don't say it to the other person 
because then it's just a threat and people don't respond well to threats. But just say to yourself, if I don't see significant changes, if I don't see us progressing towards this, or I'm going to look at one house a week or one place a week for the next you know, month, uh, whatever it is, you have to take the action. You have to use timelines and you're the one in charge of all of these things, Rosemary. I think your name is Rosemary the last caller, you are in charge of it. Um, nothing gets, nothing moves until you move it. Nothing gets done with these specific things until you do it. You're the one in charge. So if you want to see change, you have to be the change that you want to see, or you have to make the changes that you want. Whew. Okay, there's that. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for that call. Um, my ex-husband has been severely depressed and drinking heavily, which is a violation of his parole. Will he eventually get in trouble for it? <laughs> I don't know. Are you going to drop a dime to the popo? <laughs> I'm just saying. How much do you like him? Or just like, I'm joking. I'm totally joking. Here's where I say, this is OPP. He's your ex. Uh, let me ask you something, Laura. I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to uh, go down a little bit so I can get you. Holy. Holy, you're worried about his health. Laura is saying, I'm worried about his health. Laura, does he live with you? Um, that's all I want to know. Does he live with you? Uh, soon to be ex. So you're, are you still living together? Let me know. Are you still living together? Um, here's a, th it's a, her soon to be ex. Um, in all of, that um laura do the two of you cohabitate do you live together right now sweetie um in all the time that you have been together all of your worrying oh he's down the road okay thank you thank you i needed that that's what i needed okay now i can answer you much better um laura listen closely and listen carefully in all the time the two of you have been together, however much time that has been, nothing, no amount of worrying that you have done, no amount of loving, healing, understanding, I understand, but you don't understand, but I understand him. I'm not mocking you. I'm just trying to be funny. I know it wasn't that funny. I get it. Um... And, and I think it's funny because I've said these exact same things to people about people that have been in my life, whether they've been a family member or a partner or a friend. You know, I, I have a lot of understanding for a lot of things. Um, but no matter how much love we, you know, put on that, no matter how much understanding we have, for, it's not changing anything about them. No matter how much we worry about them, no matter how much we cared, didn't change a gosh darn thing. Not one gosh darn thing didn't change. Um, so here's what I'm going to say. This is OPP, other people's problems. We have our own problems, okay? Um, and sometimes, and I know people don't always love this as a statement. Sometimes you have to let people go be, be them, let people be people, let them be the person they want to be until they get to the point where they're sick and tired of themselves. As long as we're trying to help them, they're getting attention from it. They're getting, they're getting something out of it they have to get to the point where they are sick of themselves the results and they have to face consequences one of those consequences may be i can't be here for this anymore 
I just can't be here for this anymore. Not, not, and that doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means for what? Like, you know what I mean? So what I'm going to say to you, Laura, is will his probation get revoked? Possibly. If somebody turns him in, probably. Um, he's not their biggest problem. But you have to let him be him. Okay? And move on with yourself. Get so involved in your life, where you're going, what you're doing, how you're making shmoney on shmoney on shmoney. And shmoney is so much money how you're living your life. You just got to live your life, girl. You just got to get out there. You have to be about you because all these years of being about that got you what? What did it, what did it get you? Where are you? Getting divorced. Why? Because everything you put into it was not, was not being felt by the other person. So you just got to be about you now. You have to Sometimes, and this is what they say, tough love, sometimes you have to just completely cut and move on and say, you know, I did, I did everything I could. I can't do anything else. And I need to, I just need to go on with my life and I need to restore what I can in me for me. And that's it. And it's, it doesn't make you bad or wrong at all. Not even a little bit. If this person was going to do anything to change or save themselves, it would have been done. And I'm sorry that it is where it is. And some people think that I'm not very, like, I'm not very soft and loving and spiritual. No, this is spirituality, the truth, honesty. It is spirituality isn't fluffy. Oh my God, he loves you so much and he's going to come around. <laughs> and then you sit and waste how much more time? No, the truth is this. The truth is we are not here as an adult daycare. We are not here as adult caretakers to physically capable people. We are not here to be at build a bear, build a man, Bob the fix it. We are here to work on us. Now, if somebody wants to join that journey and work on, and I know this goes against everything most people believe, but we have to help them. They have to help themselves. They have to want it. Otherwise, we are putting all of our energy into something that is fighting against us. If they don't want it, what are we doing? We could be putting that into us. And that's where it's supposed to be going. We were not put here to change somebody else's path or journey. Only they can do that. We have to focus on our path and our journey. And whoever wants to come along for that ride, get on because it's about to go. So get on, hold on and be ready to heal and grow. And that's it. That's that's where you're supposed to be at this point. So um, thank you for the question and sorry for the, ah, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next, <laughs> next caller. Eight. Uh, 850, I think that is. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Michelle, and I'm calling up from Florida. Hey, Michelle. How are you today? Oh, all right. Um, well, I just recently went through a split up like four months, and, and um, so I'm having a hard trouble trusting people, but I met some new friends, and it's the first time I've actually went out and did anything. So I met a new girl, uh, getting my nails done and they actually drove like four hours on our boat and came and picked me up and took me with them to the island and I was like wow I was like I was just like okay what's their motive 
<laughs> I get <laughs> that. So I do. Nice. Here's like, what. I, go ahead, love. Go ahead. I'm saying that I met another girl. Uh, she's in a sailboat right next to me, and um, I'm like, can I trust her? You know, uh, I thought about having her stay on my boat when I go out of town. You know, that way somebody's. I'm worried is my ex going to sabotage my boat or something? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I thought about having her stay on my boat, but I don't really know her either, Yeah, you know, but she seems pretty friendly from talking to her on, on the dock and stuff, you know? So what I'm going to say, you so don't, like, you don't need to have anybody stay on the boat, you know, and here's what I say. When you meet people, you don't have to go all in trust and you don't have to not trust them. You just allow it to unfold and be observant. Okay. But the other thing I want to say is okay. sometimes when we get rid of the anchor, we can really move into different things and different groups and be in a different space with people. And what I would say to you, my love, um, is allow people to come in. Don't expect people to, you know, be your best friend right away. Just allow things to unfold and go forward. And for those of you listening that are going through breakups and split ups and divorces and i've said this for myself and i'm i she's basically reiterating it sometimes when you let certain energies go that you've been very invested in or <clears throat> whatever it is new people come in and it's fantastic it doesn't have to be forever but it's just showing you that this is out there and available. And it's because your energy is going up. So now you're, you're matching energy with different, a different type or different group of people love. So I just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Okay, sweetie. I will. It, it was just, <laughs> it was just weird, you know, and, uh, it, and you're right. It is a different type of group of people because her husband is like 13 years younger than she is. And she came out of the shower, you know, to get the sand off of her. And she came up here and she's like, she asked her husband to comb the knots out of the back of her hair. And I was like, wow, she's spoiled. You know, but I didn't say no. that. I was like, man, she's a lucky girl, you know? Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's say she's loved. And that is, that is, you know, what's so crazy about that is, we think that's going above and beyond when we would do that for our female friends, our guys, whatever it is. That's that. And again, because we've been in situations where maybe um, people have not care, been caring with us or done caring acts with us, then when we see that, we're like, wow, that's wow. And that's just, that's something normal. Like if you say to somebody, can you put lotion on my back? Because we can't reach our back. Um, that should not be a big deal. It should be a point Well, here, let me put lotion on your back. But we think of that as, oh my seconds. gosh, that's so amazing. Look at that. It's, it's an act of caring. It's simply an act of caring. And that's the goal, to have somebody who cares about you, somebody who cares for you, somebody who cares and shows it also through actions. See, right there, folks, right there. Okay, I love each and every one of you so much. I'm going to try to do a pop-up show this weekend or later this week. I'm still doing the self journey. If you want to join it, go to my website. You'll be happy to uh, see the stuff. You'll also see um, my private sessions and I will, I don't know. I just, you guys go make miracles in your life. Go have fun. Go do something you really want to do. If nobody wants to join you, who cares? Just go and do it. I love you so stinking much.